Welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for being here. And today I'm surrounded by pumpkins, uh, which um, makes this a more fun space to be in. Uh, and I hope you're going to enjoy today's webinar because it's going to be about a theme that's very, very important. It's going to be about a theme that everyone's talking about and everyone is scared about and everyone doesn't know how to use it. So it's leveraging AI for your content. And I'm going to show you how you can leverage it in such a way that you're su successful. It's going to make your life much easier and you are going to be using it more and more. So quick thing about who I am. So my name is Vasco Botello. Um, I've got 42 plus years uh, in marketing strategy and new business development. I've worked in dozens of projects around the world, consulted all over the place. And I've worked as a, a director or vice president or CEO of companies that, or brands like Coca-Cola, Schweppes, San Miguel, um, Tupperware, Eden Earring, Incentro IPTV, Redvoe Telecom, Teleperformance, Computerland, and the list goes on. But when you get to my age, hey, that's normal. So do go to my um, LinkedIn profile, do connect with me, do send me a message, and um, would love to chat with you guys if uh, you want to. No problem there. Moving on. Big question. Why are people scared to use AI? And let me say this. I remember many years ago when, for example, uh, spreadsheets came out. Everyone was very scared of, of them. I'm from the time when you use something called Lotus 123. Some of you might remember Lotus 123. Now we've moved into something much better, Excel uh, sheets. But uh, everyone was scared about it. Everyone was saying, oh, it's going to kill accountancy. It's going to kill math. It's going to kill that. It's going to destroy this, that. And people didn't know how to use it. I even go far back as in the early 70s when people were scared of using calculators. Imagine that, okay? So things have moved on tremendously. And when email came on, people were very, very scared to use email. They didn't know how to answer it. They didn't know how to sort it. They didn't know what to do with it. And they're always very unsure if you are getting the email. So you'd always send a receipt request when you sent an email to make sure the person got it. Nowadays, we just take it for granted. You send an email, someone gets it. And it's part of our lives. And when someone says to you, I had experience recently to deal with uh, an issue. Oh, you have to write us a letter and it has to be handwritten because we have to check it's your handwriting. And I went, oh no, not that again. We're not used to that anymore because things in the world have, have moved on. It's like, you know, the microwave, it's part of our lives. And we only really miss it when there's a power shortage. We can't use our microwaves and we go, what do we use now? Crikey, you know, our life moves on. Or You've got no internet at home and you go, oh, I have to go and read a book or even maybe listen to the radio on batteries. So things have moved tremendously and to the point that now we've got AI and people are a bit scared about using it. And the big, big problem, I think, is that people overthink. They really do. They overthink what's going to happen. If, if it's going to go wrong, it's not going to bite you. There's no problem with it. And our big problem is the hurdles that we put in front of our minds. And have you ever wondered why, for example, you give one of your sons or grandsons your iPhone or your phone or your tablet, and they pick it up, and five minutes later, they're telling you something they found that you have never seen. And they go, how did they find that? And the reason is simple. They, they don't overthink anything. They just click on this button, they try this. They're not scared. While we are scared, we're thinking, hang on, if I press this button, this is gonna 
breakdown. It's going to cost me a thousand pounds for me to fix. Um, something bad's going to happen. Uh, we keep on overthinking. And with AI, same thing is happening. People are putting in the same questions, the same problems, the same issues that we have been putting in the past for other things. And the important thing is that you don't overthink. Just use it. Because AI, it's a very powerful tool that can make your life much easier. So some people are scared about it because misinformation. They fear that, for example, ChatGPT may provide inaccurate information, promote false beliefs, uh, and things like that. It only does what you tell it to do. Remember that. Then, this is an important one. It's the loss of human interaction. Uh, you know, it still happens today when you phone somewhere and you know, you're talking to a machine and it tells you to press one for this and press two for that and say this and say that and you get frustrated because of all the, these hurdles I put in front of you. Uh, but people like the human interaction. So they're anxious about, you know, for example, chatbots replacing human interaction. And it's interesting, there's some AI out there with um, uh, using AI where you talk to people that talk to you and they're not human. And they answer every single question you have. How's that? Then the other one, which is an important one, lack of control. Some users may feel a bit uncomfortable uh, because they have limited control of our AI uh, response or behaves in some of uh, the things. But if we focus on content, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, it's easy. Just redo it. Ask other questions. Ask, tell it to do other things. And I'm going to show you later on uh, how, through an example, how this will work. Then there's the technical issues, glitches, errors, confusion, frustration about this. But I think one of the main things is that we are scared to have lost the train. It's just went past and we don't know how to catch it. But it, it, it's easy. Just go and try. That's the most important thing with any new technology, is for you to try, see how it fits you, how it fits your business, how it can help you become even better. Because these are tools. Now, they've got bad things about it, which I'm not going to mention, uh, but they do. Like everything in the world is good and bad for everything. But if you look at this with the right perspective, it's going to help you tremendously. It's going to make you be a better professional. It's going to help your business be more successful. And it's going to make your life much, much easier. So <clears throat> why AI? Number one, time efficiency. You know, you can generate media content quickly and importantly, automatically. Consistency. AI can maintain a consistent tone and style across all social media posts and they're easy to write. Then it can give you content suggestions. You know, it can ge generate ideas based on trending topics, on keywords, or interests of the target audience. And you know, I keep on talking to people, and sometimes they ask me questions and I go, have you tried using one of the AI tools like ChatGPT, for example? They go, no, try it. And sometimes we even do it together online and huge surprises. I get that every, every single time. So do it, try it. Then an important thing that everyone needs to bear this in mind. It's essential to note that while AI can be a va very valuable tool um, for social media content creation, human oversight is crucial. So it can produce anything, just don't copy and paste it. Make it your own, make it your own voice. Check what it's written. Tell it to do it again, because then it starts learning with you. It starts to become your voice. It starts to get your ideas and projecting those ideas forward. So control it, check it, and use, uh, you know, Use other AI tools to 
supplement and complement what you're doing. And many times I use three or four different types of tools you, asking the same question. And then I check them through, see if they are true. Um, you have to be careful of some of the things you do there. For example, recently I needed a quote about a very specific thing and I couldn't find one. So I asked AI, and I'm not going to say which one, uh, asked one, one of them to give me a quote by this famous person. I can say the person, Mark Twain. Uh, if he had said anything about this. And it came up with this brilliant, and I mean really brilliant, quote. And I went, wow, this really fits in. I didn't know Mark Twain had really, but I wanted Mark Twain because of what I had written. And then I said, I better double check this because it looks too good to be true. I went and double check it and I came to the conclusion and I was even told by one of the AI tools that this was made up. Mark Twain had never said that, but he just made it up for me. So you have to be careful when you ask, for example, for a quote, if that person really did say that quote. So do your research well, check. Human oversight in everything we do is necessary. It might come one day that you don't need it anymore. You know, nowadays you have to type everything in, but more and more now there are tools out there. You can talk to it and it does everything for you. So it makes even your life much, much easier. But human oversight is important, really, really important. And the combination of the human interaction with AI is critical and you have to do it. You need to over, there needs to be a human oversight over all of us. So the only thing that you have to bear in mind is that you are controlling it. Everything is done because you set it to do. Let's move on. So let me give you just six. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of things you can use AI for. I just want to mention a few. Good one for all of us that are in business. It can generate ideas for businesses. For example, if you're looking for a business idea, a marketing strategy, uh, a name for a product, uh, it can provide you with very interesting creative ideas. Imagine you want to launch a new product. You go, this is the product, tell it what it is. This is what it does. This is the market, this is the criteria. Give me 10, 20 names for this product. Or you might need a catchphrase and you go, get me, a, my company does this, works in this very specific industry with these very specific people. Get me 10, 20 catchphrases that I can use. And then, you know, you can just pick one out of those or pick and mix and get a really nice one and punchy one. And you can even you ask it, make it punchy, make it um, powerful. And it does that. It's, it's amazing the things it can do on that, on that front. The other one is to draft and um, emails and messages. I don't know if it's happened to you. Sometimes you have to write a very good answer to an email, um, send a message and you go, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to tell this person. Sometimes you have to be friendly and maybe you don't want to be that friendly or sometimes you don't know how to be that friendly. Um, it could be answering a very critical question that you need to give it a good answer and you don't know how to go about it. Use AI for that. It's brilliant. You know, it can produce some very interesting messages that you can then adapt to your own voice. Or you can even ask it to adapt it to your own voice. You can say, don't make it personal. Uh, you can say, make it funny. Um, make it um, something else. Just tell it and it will do it for you. And you can even go as far as saying, give me four options, four different options, and it will do it for you. So some of you, for example, that are yet 
today, you've got LinkedIn. And sometimes you might get something on LinkedIn say, could you do, write me a recommendation? And you go, wow, what I'm going to say. Use AI for that. It will draft you this amazing recommendation that you go through, see if it fits the person and the profile of the person, adapt it and use it. So that is a, a, an easy one. Then the other one is quite an interesting one, which is tenders and pitches. When you have to participate in one of these, sometimes you get loads of pages, sometimes you even get just an email, and you go through it and you go, what do they mean? What do they want? You can't understand it. So you can just copy everything, paste it onto AI, and say, give me this into bullet points, or transform this into bullet points, or give me the most important bullet points that you can get out of this. And it's going to be interesting. You're going to find how easy then it becomes. You can even say, do it into, into 20 bullet points, 10 bullet points, and then just go through the bullet points. You get the main idea. Then easily, you can go through the tender and do things. Ask it, what, paste in the, the tender, say, what are the documents I really need to, to produce? And it'll pick those up for you, which is just great, because then you can get somebody in the team to get those ready. Because sometimes we miss them in the, amongst all the te text, what you need to, to, to be sending. So these little things are brilliant. You, great help, really great help. Then it can answer questions. You know, it can produce very informative answers um, to a wide range of questions and uh, various topics. Recently, I've got a friend of mine. She runs, she's a, a scientist, and she runs a very specific, in a very big company, uh, area in AI. And uh, we were talking, and uh, she was telling me what she was doing and so on. And just for the fun of it, while we, you know, we, we, it was a chat, I took what she said, put it into AI, and said, write me a very scientific answer to this comment. And in three seconds, I got the answer. And uh, I copied it and pasted it. And this friend of mine, who's, she, she, she's a person that even goes on to BBC uh, News and talks about these AI stuff, very in-depth stuff. She answered back, I didn't know you knew so much about what I do. I'm amazed. And, you know, I just let the conversation flow a little bit more. And then I said, you know what? I got this from AI. <laughs> it wasn't me. I don't understand nothing about what you do. Uh, so we had this great laugh because, it, you know, this amazing reply I got um, from her in terms of a surprise. She, she thought I was a genius. So there you go. Um, the other one is helping you provide explanations. So complex concepts, topics, it can help you uh, better explain them to others. So imagine you're in manufacturing. And sometimes you've got difficulties in getting through what your product does because you're too technical. And, you know, one of the things that I'm sure you, you'll not be surprised by this is that sometimes the people that are the buyers, the people that are buying from you, the heads of purchasing, um, they are people that are not specialists in that very specific area. And uh, you need to get your message through to them because otherwise it becomes too technical and they don't see the advantages of your product or your solution. So a great way is put it onto one of these AI tools and say, make it easier and simpler for people to understand. And it will do that for you. Try it, test it. So these are some of the things and I just chose six. There are, as I said, there are hundreds of these that you can use AI for. Then let's go back to basics in terms of writing content. And I love writing content. 
So it's very dear to me. And the colleague I've got here with me today on the techie side of today's webinar is, is also great at content. So it's two of us that love content. Uh, and this is a really interesting thing because one of the things that everybody that is on social media has, especially professional people uh, that deal with other things, is how do I write content that makes people wanting to know more, that creates curiosity for them to get in touch with me to want to know more? How do I do that? And sometimes many of you will sit hours and hours writing a piece of content that gets to the end, you go, I don't like it. Or you post it and you get no interactions with it. So let's go back to basics because many of you, I'm sure, are just running out of ideas. You know, you are posting the wrong images. You are writing content wrongly. You are not doing things correctly. And there are two things that we keep on saying about content. It needs two things that creates one thing. You need your content to have something we call stopping power, that people are looking at it and go, wow, this is interesting, stop me. Number two, staying power, that people who want to stay read more about what you've got to say. And then these two will create a very important thing and must create a very important thing, curiosity. And many of you that have you know, been to um, one of the webinars I've, do, I've done in the past will remember this. You need to talk to your prospects and to your clients' pains. You need to show them that you, your product, your solution is the paracetamol to their problem, to their pain. So it sounds nice what I'm saying, but how do you put it into practice? And AI is the ideal tool or tools for you to use. So when you're running out of all these ideas, this is something that can help you. You can even ask AI, this is the copy I've written, paste it in, what image should go with it? Give me five ideas of images or GIFs that could go with this or videos. And that's what it does. I, for example, have been using something nowadays, which is I use interesting videos, in some cases fun videos, as analogies to what I've written. And you can go and check my LinkedIn profile and see it there. You'll see this, these videos that are analogies to what I've written. So an AI will tell you or give you an idea of what you should be looking for, what you should be collecting for your posts, for your copy. So here are some AI tools. These are some that I use. And some of them, I use all of them at the same time. And I'll double check and then I pick and mix and then I'll adapt it to my voice. And slowly I found they are starting to talk like me. So ChatGPT, it's a great one. Uh, ChatGPT has got this little problem at the moment, which is it uses a library that's been updated until 2023. But I do believe by the end of this year, it's going to be completely updated. Uh, sorry, 20, 2021. Uh, and then it's going to be updated uh, and it's going to become even better. Then there's another interesting one. It's Claude. And Claude uh, is a great one. Claude.ai. Uh, because it both uses Google and uses the same database that ChatGPT uses. It's a different type of voice it, it has, but it's very similar to ChatGPT. So it, it's an interesting alternative. Then you've got another one. And this one belongs to Google. It's uh, Bard. And Bard, for me, this, so I've got some issues with it because it's got a very, a, a very young language, type of language, very, writes like for teenagers. Uh, that's my feeling anyway. That's the experience I've got. You might have another one, but try it out. Very interesting. Also, it's very thing that it writes. It's very summarized. And it uses 
all the searches on Google, it takes a bit longer to find. So ChatGPT might take you three seconds or two seconds. Claude, uh, a little bit more, like three, four seconds. Bard will take sometimes even up to six seconds to give you a reply. That's a very, very interesting one. And then there's another one that mixes all of these, goes to the library, goes to Google, goes to loads of places. It's ChatSonic. Um, it's another interesting tool. I've got my personal, the one that I personally like. I won't tell you what it is. I've got mine. You have to choose and what yours would be. There are many more out there, many more out there, but these are the ones that are mostly used nowadays. And these are the ones that I use and I enjoy using them. So there you go. ChatGPT, great one. Claude, Bard and ChatSonic. And ChatGPT has got this great thing that you can link it to other tools. Um, uh, which will make what you do much easier. Uh, and then all of them are free. Uh, and in some cases, you can upgrade to new versions and those are paid. But then, you know, the one that you use most um, sort of just adapted to what you do. And if you want to pay for, to have more and better features, just do it. Uh, Bard is completely free, so there's no paid uh, there in, in, into anything. Then there are some additional tools. Remember, we are talking about using AI for copy, but then you need other tools to go and look for things. So you could use things like, for example, um, royalty-free images, and you can go to, there's just, I've just got two of them over here, um, and Splash and Pixels. Although in Unsplash and Pixels, there are images that you use that you, they have to be paid for, but the vast majority are royalty free. Just be sure that you are using the royalty free ones because they've got agreements with other companies that are paid images. Then for grammar, and this is critical guys, when you're writing to people, uh, your English should be perfect. Now, it could be a, other languages they've also got uh, on this, which is Grammarly. Grammarly, it's an amazing tool. So, for example, for us, us English speakers, if you are in the UK, choose UK English. If you are in America, use American English. Um, but it's a great tool. It helps you as you write, use the correct phrases, use the correct words, and they are grammatically correct. So. It sits on your Chrome, it's free. There's also a, an upgrade paid version, but the main features are all free. Uh, it sits on your Chrome and it's amazing. Then instead of using images, you might want to use some GIFs. And for that, go to Giphy and just put in what you were looking for and it'll give you these amazing GIFs that you can uh, go through and use it. Then you want to change fonts and some people tend to ask me, how are you using different types of fonts on your um, posts on, on social media? And you've got bold and you've got italic and you've got different types of fonts. How do you do that? Well, it's Lingo Jam. It's one of them. There's, there's other tools there. I personally use Lingo Jam. So Google Lingo Jam, go there. All you have to do is right on the left hand side, you write down what you want or you paste uh, in, in normal uh, font. And then on the right hand side, you will get the version that you can copy and paste it onto your post. Videos downloads, just do it online. There's so many. Now just search online, search video download online, and uh, it'll appear a number of them. And then you just have to copy the link into there and you get the videos. And then last but not least, there are two very interesting ones where you can do a very long video. So for example, today's um, webinar being, you know, the recording of this, it can be downloaded into one of these and then it can cut into 10 small videos and it does it automatically. And it, you know, it syncs everything in, it puts in uh, subtitles um, and it does it in the right places. You don't need to tell it anything, just up, put it there, and you get the 10 videos. It takes a bit of time, but it's interesting, something you should try. So if you're trying to make videos for TikTok, this is a great thing. Just you know, record a video 
of you talking about your company, talking about your product, your solution, um, and just talk for, I don't know, half an hour, 20 minutes, and then upload it there, and it will slowly cut it up and make you 10 videos that then you can upload to your TikTok. And you can have quite a few for that. So, is, so it's Opus Clip, it's one, and the other one, it's CapCut. So try these, and I'm sure it's gonna help you tremendously. So, before I say thank you, I want to show you something live. So I'm gonna go out of the presentation, and I'm gonna go to ChatGPT. So this is chat. I'm gonna say, oh, it's a new chat. There we are, new chat. And I'm gonna say, write a post for LinkedIn about the advantages of using chat GPT to write a post. So I've done that. Enter one, two, three, and there it is. Unlocking the power of AI with ChatGPT, elevate your content creation. And then there it is. All down. And then you can go, it even gives me, I never use these because you have to be very careful about hashtags, and I've spoken about these. Um, on mine, I'm using an addition which is AI PRM or Jet. Chat GPT, which gives me some uh, uh, extras, so you can also do that. So you can link this to it, uh, and it helps you tremendously. And as you'll see here, I can now go and say, you know what? I don't like this title. It even gives me emojis. I go. I can even word like. Boost this title and make it more, uh, let me say aggressive. I don't know what's going to produce. And let's see. There you go. Unleash Aerosia, supercharge your content creation. of elevate supercharge uh, you just tell it what you want to do you could even go imagine this is an article and you could go um, uh, write a comment on this write a small comment on this post Here it is. And it, it has written it. And as I said before, you can go, I do coaching and training um, to entrepreneurs of busy. By the way, I'm coming up with these ideas now. I didn't think about these. So this is really live. I do coaching and training to, to busy entrepreneurs. Give me five catch phrases for my business. And then it, I use Grammarly. Grammarly is telling me four catchphrases. There we go. Corrected. Let's see what it says. So it's, I've asked that. There it is. Elevate your entrepreneurial edge. Unlock your success potential. 
more string is five. Then I can choose one of them. This one. Make it in a more young. I don't know why I'm saying this, but let's see what it comes up with. Let's see if it surprises me as well. Thriving amid the hustle, bossing your business game. So you can use this for many things. And then it's easy. Imagine I want to do a LinkedIn post on, on my previous one. And I can say, write me a LinkedIn, write me, is write a short LinkedIn post about the advantages of doing business in Oxford. I don't know what it's going to say. There it is. It's written that for me. I copy. I read it. And then, you know, just go onto your profile. Oops. Paste. And then I read everything see if, and I make it very friendly to readers. So take that out. I'll put in three dots. Space. I'll break it even more, make it easier to read. There it is. So I'll break down first the copy. Here it is. And there it is. And I got a post. Then I have to find the image. And then I can use the fonts to, as I showed you guys, to make this much better. So copy, go to Google. I'll search fonts here. Yeah. Because I've in Lingo Jam. There's Lingo Jam. I paste, then on the right hand side, I look for what I want. This is the type I want. I copy, go back to the post, and I paste. Oops. There it is. Easy. Real easy. So, on all of this, let me go back to presentation again if I may in all of this it's simple use it don't be scared of it it was gonna it's gonna make your life much easier it's gonna make your life much better it's gonna help your business sometimes you're thinking what I'm gonna do with the ask it questions see what it produces for you you're going to see that's going to be one of the most important tools and one of your best friends you ever had. So do go and try it. Uh, do get in touch with me and let me know how it went. I'm sure it's going to go very well. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. And as I said, go and try it. Have a great day. Take care. We'd like to invite you to visit Oxlabs website. The address is on screen at the moment and on it you're going to find great help for your business. It's got this amazing tool there that it's called the Oxlab Business Support Tool. And the great thing about this tool is that it's going to help your business find the appropriate support and events to help you and your business succeed. It just takes about seven minutes to fill in and you will find out what Oxlab can do for you.